You already know that follow-along tutorial projects aren't going to help you get a job in AI or machine learning. Instead, you need self-motivated, end-to-end projects, things you scoped, built, and shipped independently. But what does that actually mean? And how can you do it with no experience? Today I'm sharing four example AI ML projects that would impress me if I was reviewing your resume to join my team at Amazon. These are not going to be cookie cutter projects that you've seen before. They're all projects I've either built personally or were designed by one of my mentees. There are no ideas from ChatGPT or Kaggle projects other people have on their resumes. I'll go through how to turn a problem in your life into a spec and all the components you need to include to demonstrate you have the skills. My goal is to inspire you to build genuinely cool, possibly even useful projects that you're excited about and help get you where you want in your career. Let's get started. Before we get into the example projects, let me lay out how I approach project planning. This will hopefully clear up a lot of the overwhelm and mysteriousness that new folks have when trying to come up with real projects. The first step in creating a project, whether it's for your portfolio or even at your job, is to identify a problem you want to solve. This can be anything. As you'll see in the example projects, the problems we're solving range from figuring out what to read next to how long until a banana goes mushy. It's fine to keep it simple and possibly even silly. After that, we're gonna do the simplest possible system design. We're going to answer these questions. First, what kind of data will you need and how will you get it? Then how will you store the data? What kind of model will you use? Think of simple baselines and then more complicated models to try. How will you deploy your model? In other words, how will users interact with your outputs? So will you produce predictions that are just saved to a database? Will you have a dashboard the user can play around with? Or will you maybe even build a whole app? I know even this step might be overwhelming, but just break it down step by step and learn as you go. Spend a couple of days working on a spec, but don't try to anticipate every problem or make it the most optimal possible design. Your goal should be to get an MVP working as fast as possible and learn and improve from there. Now here are some examples of putting this into practice. Project number one, Shelf Scanner, an AI powered book discovery app. For this app, I wanted to solve an annoying little problem I had recently. I was at a book sale and I didn't recognize any of the books on the shelves. So I didn't know what to buy and I ended up just not buying anything. My idea to solve this problem was pretty simple. You put in your reading preferences and Goodreads data, take a picture of the bookshelf with your phone, and an AI model recognizes the books and makes recommendations. You can save stuff to read later or just buy the books directly on Amazon. I deliberately kept the app really basic with no user accounts or payments. I bought a domain on Squarespace and deployed it. For data collection and storage, I needed some way to store user reading history and preferences, so I used a Postgres database. To handle image uploads from phones, I used Molter middleware, and I just used device-based session management instead of user accounts. The AI pipeline was pretty simple. I didn't train any models at all. I just used OpenAI's GPT-40 Vision API for extracting book spine text and identifying what's on the shelf. This API works well, but is kind of expensive, so I added limits to how much it can be used, and I put the Google Vision API as a fallback. Then I used GPT-40 again to generate personalized recommendations based on the user's preferences and reading history. Deployment was straightforward too. I used Versal for serverless deployment, which is as simple as connecting Versal to your GitHub repo. I don't have any web development experience, so I basically vibe coded an Express.js backend and React frontend. The UI is a simple, mobile-friendly web app with just the minimum necessary functionality to solve the problem. So everything I just described would be a complete project. But since I have a bit more experience and I'm a perfectionist, I did some extra credit things too. I added caching for storing book metadata so I wouldn't hit the same APIs repeatedly, which speed things up and makes it cheaper. I also added rate limiting to avoid abuse of the app and control costs. Lastly, I built in monitoring and alerting with a simple admin dashboard, added some comprehensive tests, and I did my best to follow security best practices. So this definitely isn't the greatest product ever built, but I'd argue it still works for a few reasons. It demonstrates core machine learning engineering skills because it shows you understand the full AI product lifecycle, all the way from data ingestion to deployment. It handles real challenges like API rate limiting, fallback strategies, security, and cost management, which is stuff you'll actually deal with in production. The architecture is simple, but production ready. This is the kind of project someone with just a little bit of experience could put together. The next project is a bit more ambitious. But first, one thing that comes up a lot when talking about building portfolio projects is how to actually have time to work on them. For me, I've found that planning my work for the week in advance makes a huge difference to actually getting things done. I've been using AkiFlow for this, and it's been so helpful getting all my work done. Here's how I actually use it. So every Sunday, I do my weekly planning. 
I've got AccuFlow connected to my personal email, my business email, GitHub, and Notion. So all my tasks from different tools automatically show up in this one universal inbox. Then I just drag tasks directly into my calendar to time block my week. The color coding helps me see at a glance what kind of work I'm doing when. And what's really cool is the AI co-pilot learning your habits. It started suggesting that I do my writing and technical studying in the mornings when I'm more focused, and it was totally right about that. It even auto-assigns similar tasks to the same time slots. The stats feature shows me how much time I'm spending on each project, which can help give some visibility into where your time sinks are, or what you've been neglecting. And the mobile app syncs everything so you can add tasks on the go. If you want to try it out, I've got a link below where you can get free access to the premium plan for three months. Plus, they'll give you a one-on-one -on -one onboarding call to set everything up. So if you're serious about building these portfolio projects, having a system like this makes all the difference. Now on to the next project, which did take a couple weeks of my side project time. Project number two, Packvote, an AI-powered group travel planning app. This one came from a super frustrating experience I had trying to plan a trip with friends. Everyone had different ideas about where to go, different budgets, different dates they're available, places they've already been, places they don't want to go, what vibe they want. It took a lot of long, annoying text threads to figure it out. My solution was to build Packvote. This is an end-to-end -end platform where you create a trip, add participants, and the system sends them SMS surveys to collect their preferences. Then an AI generates personalized destination recommendations, the group votes on them using a ranked choice system, and we get a consensus on the best place to go. For this app, data collection and storage was much more complex than Shelf Scanner. I needed to track trips, participants, survey responses, and recommendations. Oh, and voting results. The main tricky bit was integrating Twilio for SMS delivery, but I got that working after some trial and error. The AI pipeline was where things got more interesting from a design perspective. Instead of just calling OpenAI directly, I built a model gateway, which is a unified interface that can route requests to OpenAI, Anthropic, or DeepSeek, depending on the task. This allows me to easily test different models or use different models on different parts of the pipeline without having to change a bunch of code. I also implemented systematic prompt engineering with versioned prompts, automated A-B testing between prompt versions, and quantitative evaluation metrics. Beyond the basic functionality, I added some production-grade features. There's real-time usage tracking and cost optimization, comprehensive monitoring with Prometheus metrics, rate limiting to prevent abuse, and a full test suite, including integration tests for the AI pipeline. My next step will be to add an agent to get real-time pricing information and improve the recommendations. This project demonstrates a much higher level of AI engineering maturity. Most importantly, it solves a real problem end-to-end, -end, or at least it will once I finish actually deploying it. <laughs> This is the kind of project someone with intermediate AI engineering experience could tackle. It's significantly more complex than Shelf Scanner, but still achievable if you break it down step by step. So if you want something a little bit easier and a little bit more machine learning focused, the next project is for you. Project number three, are you a cat? This is a production ML ops system project. This one started as kind of a joke, but it actually turned into a pretty serious ML ops learning project for me. The stated problem is, sometimes it's hard to know if you are a cat or not. Upload a selfie and I'll help you figure that out. But really, this was earlier in my career and I just wanted to build a proper end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline with all the fun ML ops pieces. Most people learning machine learning build models in Jupyter notebooks, maybe save them in pickle files and kind of call it a day. But in the real world, you need data pipelines, automated training, model validation, deployment, automation, monitoring, feedback loops, all kinds of stuff. This project was my attempt to build all that from scratch in a simple way. For data and training, I used a mix of free data sets I found online, so cats, dogs, selfies, and just random images, to create a somewhat realistic classification problem. The training data gets pre-processed through a pipeline that handles data ingestion, data validation with deep checks, and feeds into a convolutional neural network built with TensorFlow. The model architecture is a fairly standard 2D CNN. There's really nothing fancy. It gets decent performance, but honestly, the model itself wasn't really the important part of this project anyway. Instead, what makes the project interesting is the pipeline orchestration. I used ZenML to build three separate pipelines, training, deployment, and inference. The training pipeline handles data ingestion, model training, and evaluation. For experiment tracking, I integrated MLflow with automatic logging of model parameters, metrics, and artifacts. This means every training run gets tracked with full reproducibility, including hyperparameters, model weights, evaluation metrics, all that fun stuff. After training, there's a deployment trigger step that checks if the new model meets minimum precision and recall thresholds. If it does, the system automatically deploys the model using MLflow's serving capabilities. If not, it stops the pipeline and keeps the existing model running. In an ideal world, it would also send an alert. 
The user interface is a simple Streamlit app that loads the latest deployed model, serves predictions in real time, and collects user feedback and saves it to S3 for future model iterations. So there's a complete feedback loop from production back to training data. Beyond the basic MLOps pipeline, I added several production grade features. I implemented data validation using deep checks to catch data quality issues before training. I set up proper configuration management, so all hyperparameters and system settings are version controlled and reproducible. This whole system is designed with caching and pipeline versioning so you can trace every model back to its exact training configuration. For monitoring, the Streamlit app collects both the uploaded images and user feedback about prediction quality. It stores everything in S3 with timestamps. This creates a data set for drift detection and continuous learning, but I haven't actually built that part yet. This project demonstrates you understand production machine learning engineering, not just building models. It's a simplified version of the kind of MLOps infrastructure you'd build at a company doing machine learning at scale. Now, if you think that project was silly, just wait for this next one. Project number four, days to banana death a computer vision regression. This idea actually came from one of my mentees at UC Berkeley. I don't think he ended up building it, but I think it's an absolutely awesome idea. The problem is simple. You buy bananas, you forget about them, and then suddenly they are brown and mushy. What if you could just take a picture of the bananas and know exactly how many days you have left before banana death? For data collection, you'd need to create your own data set, which is actually part of what makes this project so fun. You'd buy a bunch of bananas at different ripeness levels, photograph them daily until they're gross or just ready for banana bread, and label each image with days remaining. You could probably collect a solid data set with just a few dozen bananas over a couple of weeks. The model would be a fairly straightforward computer vision regression problem. You could start with a pre-trained ResNet or something similar and fine tune on your banana data set. The input is the banana image. The output is a single value representing days until death. For the mobile app, if you don't have software engineering experience, I'd build it as a simple web app rather than a real mobile app. You can use the device camera. It works across platforms and you don't need to deal with app store stuff. The UI would be super simple with just a camera button, snap a photo, get a prediction, maybe with some kind of confidence interval. I would also definitely include cute animations or graphics. You could deploy the model using something like Fast API with a lightweight front end, host it on Versal, and then you're done. The whole thing could probably be built in a weekend if you already have the data set. So this project works because it's funny and that matters more than people think. A project like this shows you have a sense of humor, you don't take yourself too seriously, and it also shows creativity. You can take machine learning concepts and apply them to completely unexpected problems. From a technical standpoint, it's a solid computer vision regression project that demonstrates you can collect your own data set, work with images, work with pre-trained models, fine tune models, and build a complete mobile friendly application. The data collection process alone shows initiative and understanding of where ML models actually come from. But the best part again is that it's genuinely useful. Anyone who's ever had bananas go bad can relate to this problem and a working solution would actually be pretty cool to show off. This is the perfect example of how you don't need to solve world hunger to build an impressive portfolio project. So I hope that was helpful. If you're more at the phase of your journey where you're still learning the fundamentals, check out my AI engineering roadmap video that's up next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.